Thank you for joining us on the Divorce Landing Literacy Podcast Series. We really appreciate you, uh, you joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, just so everybody knows, today we have Miss Janet Rhodes Freeman. She's a, a certified financial planner, a certified divorce financial analyst, and she has her MBA. Uh, she's a senior financial advisor with Financial Planning Solutions. Um, and today, Janet, we're going to focus particularly on your divorce uh, financial analysis piece of, of your credential. Um, and one thing I read while, while looking over your bio before this conversation um, was that you especially, you especially enjoy working with women um, mm -hmm. who have limited financial uh, background, mm -hmm. uh, who don't really understand their finances, and that are considering going through divorce. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get into that niche? What kind of drew you to that, to that piece? So um, I've been a financial planner um, for about 15 years now, and a number of my newer clients and prospects would come to me. Um, a lot of women want to work with women, first of all, so I did attract um, a number of female clientele. They either came to me post-divorce mm -hmm. or they're contemplating divorce, but the ones that stood out to me were the women who came post-divorce and thought they had been well served and didn't understand that they really had not been. And it was kind of too late to go back and redo. Um, and I realized that um, I was fortunate in that I had a mother who was very financially literate, which was unusual um, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have an interest and an ability to work with financial matters, but most women, even my age bracket, 50s and 60s, uh, many of them still don't have even basic financial literacy skills. And it's an issue even for younger people too, but um, I felt this is one way I could really serve a niche that um, really was underserved and help women. And I've had male clients too, male only sure. clients. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to work with either or both as a neutral. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I found it was a way to not just help someone through the divorce process, but also help set them up for um, financial well-being going forward post-divorce. That, that's wonderful. I always find it really interesting to hear that. I hear that from a lot of people in your profession, how women um, just lack a lot of knowledge when it comes to, to finances. Uh, in a marriage situation, and it's often troubling for them in, in when going through a divorce. So yeah. uh, kudos to you for kind of taking that on. It's a big, big task for sure. Thank you. Um, for those folks that are listening today and might be considering, you know, going down the path of divorce, um, anything, any advice that you could give somebody that's starting down this path uh, as to kind of what to look for um, or any advice in general? That's a great question. Um, I've seen clients who have been thinking about getting divorced for many years. Mm -hmm. I also have clients who have been surprised, <laughs> like yeah. they were not expecting to get a divorce. But uh, what I will say for everybody who's listening, whether you're in a great marriage or contemplating a divorce or not really sure what's happening <laughs> in your world, um, you really need to be aware of your family's finances. Um, and have a good understanding of what you have in investments, what your income is, what your expenses are, understand when you sign your tax return, what you're actually signing. Um, I've see, seen too many people who rely on, it, it, and I, I've worked with same-sex partners. One partner does all the financial matters and the other just goes along because either they're not interested, they just don't, they feel the other person's a responsible partner that way. But they you really shouldn't be in the dark about your finances. You really should be uh, at least aware of all of the circumstances of your finances so that you're not caught off guard if you end up needing to get a divorce. And if you are thinking of getting divorced, you should know where all of your documents are, um, be able to access them easily, keep them up to date. And I know it's something a lot of people don't want to do, but it's so important because the last thing you want to do is be um, missing information that could be beneficial to you if you go through the divorce process. So I think it's really just a matter of getting organized and staying at least you know, on top of at once a year on top of your finances. Right. 
uh, not to scare people too much, but what are some of the concerns? You, you tell people they should have all this information and be knowledgeable. What are you seeing as far as people that are not knowledgeable? Um, and what are some of the things that are happening with them? So I've seen a number of cases where um, a couple will have, you know, significant assets, you know, maybe several million dollars between their investments, their retirement plans and a home. Mm-hmm. And the other partner has no idea whether they have 50000 or 500000 in a plan. Um, they, I've seen situations where money is hidden. You know, one partner is preparing to leave and um, may have accounts that are not, um, they keep them away, you know, the information away from their, from their partner. Um, I've seen situations where there's a house owned jointly and one of the partners has taken out one or more um, extra loans against the house and the other partner had no idea. There's all kinds of things that can happen. There are pensions sometimes from a former employer that one partner may not be aware of because they met after the person, their partner left that company. Um, There may be all kinds of things that if you don't have a good grasp on your, it's not just the assets, it's also your expenses. Sure. Um, Because when you are moving forward with divorce, in almost every case, you're going to set up two households. Right. And you need to kind of know what your current expenses are for a joint household and use that information to help build budgets for your two households, which will obviously be more expensive for both parties in yeah. and combined. So, Well, good advice. Thank you very much for sharing all that. Mm-hmm. Um, when someone is going down the path of divorce and they're looking for a financial professional like yourself to kind of help them and guide them through this process, Anything uh, in particular that you think that people should be looking out for uh, to find that right person? I think you have to really think about your own circumstances, whether um, both parties are amicable. I mean, that's the Mm -hmm. best case. (laughs) Divorce is not a great thing to go through. I personally have been divorced five years ago um, and ours was amicable. And I can't even tell you how much better it is to um, be able to go through the process if both parties are being upfront and transparent about everything. But many cases that's not happening. And if if you can do it without going to litigation, going to court, you're so much better off because it's going to get very, very costly very quickly. Yeah. And I think given the size of some of the divorces I've worked with, between the two parties, they don't have a ton of assets. Yeah. And to spend a lot of their assets on legal fees is just it's not it's not prudent. It drives so up I think pretty quick dries up pretty quickly. It does. It yeah. does. So if you can at all um consider going through a divorce, I I really like the mediation method where mm-hmm. clients work with a mediator who works with both parties in the couple mm-hmm. um and develops the separation agreement. And a parenting plan if there's minor children. Um, I recommend if they have a home and one wants to buy out the other, or if they're not going to sell the home, to work with someone like you, a certified divorce lending professional. A little plug there. Thank you very <laughs> but, much. Appreciate uh, it. You have a lot of expertise in all the different possibilities um, for how one party could keep the home, or if they really neither can. And I've seen sadly many cases where it just doesn't make sense for either party to keep the house um and also um tooting my own horn here but yeah um i'm a certified divorce financial analyst and i have um the ability to develop a range of scenarios for clients um about what their future will look like post-divorce depending on how they divide assets if there's any sort of child support or alimony um all kinds of scenarios. I have specialized software that I use that can develop these scenarios. Um, when I was a, when I just worked as a financial planner, CFP, which I s- still do that in a, most of my work, but we were not trained in divorce topics other than a very superficial level. Yep. Um, anyone who um, is going through divorce should really think hard about perhaps hiring a CDFA, Certified Divorce Financial Analyst, because we have specialized training and ongoing um, educational requirements to keep up that relate specifically to divorce. And I think that's your, it, it's money well spent um, to help you get through that process and know that, because a lot of the attorneys, they know 
and some of them are excellent. Some yeah. attorneys are really excellent and do it all themselves. Um, but some really don't know. They're focused on what is the split at the time of the divorce. Yeah. And they don't look out three, five, 10, 15 years to see how the parties will be faring financially. They, they know the law, but they don't know the finances yeah. all that well. Yeah. Yeah. So so seek out the professional help of a CDFA is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, with all these cases that you have worked on, have there been any memorable cases that you might want to share with us, whether mm -hmm. good or bad? I would say one of the saddest cases um, was early on. I worked on a divorce. Uh, I was representing the man at the time, actually, because uh, he came to me. Very wealthy couple. They were both in their 80s. They'd been married for 62 years. Wow. I'll never forget this. And he was living in Florida. She was living in Massachusetts. He just wanted to get divorced so he could be with his younger girlfriend who was in yep. her 60s. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they both would have been so much better off if they just stayed married and lived separately. Right. But instead, he insisted he wanted to get divorced and he alienated his four children, his adult children. Um, the mother, his wife, was in poor health and it just made her final years awful. She has since passed away. But that's stupid. I remember just thinking to hear that this is a case where you could just ha develop some sort of arrangement where you don't need to get the divorce per se. And he did not remarry the girlfriend. And he ended up losing half his assets because she got those. Sure. Um, and he lost his family in the process. So it's not a it's a very sad story, but it was wow. You know, you can yeah. have between them they had over ten million dollars. <laughs> just to give you a sense of that, quite quite a bit of money. Yes, and that's yeah, not my typical case. Most of my cases, you know, they may have one or two retirement plans, a home in the Boston area with a lot of leverage, you know, a lot of debt. Yeah. Um, I'd say half, half the time, both parties are working half the time, just one and most of them have kids. So that's always an issue too, of what's going to happen with not just the kids through high school, but how is college going to be paid for? And that's another big thing I see is a real struggle to figure out college expenses. And, and you help the families kind of work all of that out and mm -hmm. show them the numbers around all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. good story, really tough story to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, but it does happen and there's a lot of emotion in divorce. So people do some strange right. things sometimes. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think it's also important when I first talk to a couple, I actually prefer, well, I can't say prefer. It really depends on the circumstance, but it's easier to advocate for one side, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but I have worked as a neutral um, where you present, here are the options. Here's yep. three scenarios and if we do X, you know, party A gets Y and the party B gets Z and vice versa with different scenarios. But I think when you work with the CDFA, you can do it either way. But if you have someone in your corner um, when you work um, with one party and their attorney, I think you can probably, especially if you don't have a lot of financial literacy under yep. your belt, that can be really useful. And but when I do you're work, when you're working as a neutral, you can't really advise either Correct. either party. You're kind of Correct. just showing them some options and helping them make the best decisions for themselves. Right. right. Yeah. And even when they say, can you please tell me which is best for me? I can say, well, here are the numbers. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't say, you know, Joanne, you, you should do X, Y, Z. And Bill, you should do. You just can't do that as a neutral. Right. You just kind of say these the numbers speak for themselves. Right. So. Right. But it's still very valuable to those couples because they want someone who has been through this, you know, with many other divorcing couples to kind sure. of understand not just how assets get divided, but the pre-tax and after-tax effects of that, for example. You know, how long, if any, alimony should be paid, right? All those things. How will they will set up a new household and talk about things like how that would there be health insurance provided for the um, divorcing spouse of one party carried it for the family. Yeah, that's All kinds of things come up that when you're first stepping into this world of thinking about divorce, you may not realize how many how many things you need to be thinking about. Right. Yeah. There's it's overwhelming. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that information with us. You're Janet. welcome. You're welcome. Um, if somebody would like to get in touch with you, uh, how do you prefer to be contacted? 
The best way to contact me is through my website with my firm. Okay. Um, our we'll website share, is. We'll be sharing that information okay. as well. But if you want to go ahead and say it, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's Financial Planning Solutions. The website is planwithfps.com. And you can go on a link and click on Meet the Team. And when you click on my photo, you can schedule a complimentary consultation with me um, via Zoom. And then we go from there. I, I talk, I'm happy to talk to anybody um, for 20, 30 minutes, get a sense of their situation and decide if they, if they would be a good fit for what I do and vice mm -hmm. versa, if I would be a good fit for them. Sometimes I'm not, it kind of depends on their circumstances. So, but I'm happy to talk to anybody on a complimentary basis. So. And can you work with anybody around the country? Yes. Yeah, so you're yes. anywhere you are listening, yes. you, can, uh, you can reach out to Jana, that's great. Right. Wonderful. So, uh, any last minute thoughts you'd like to share with us before um, we wrap up? Just, you know, know that whatever you're going through, I can speak personally. I'm still on good on good terms with my ex-husband, but you get through it yeah. and there is life at the end of the tunnel. And, um, you know, it can be really, really hard. You might be going through some really tough stuff, um, but know that if you're unhappy, you have a chance to be happier again. You know, if you get through this and you are well served by your attorney and the other professionals who support you. Great advice, great advice. Janet rhodes Feeman. thank you very much for joining us today. You're very welcome, Mark. Great to see, see you. See you again soon. Okay, bye.